Hello guys and welcome to Fake News Show. This is where we tell you all about fake news. What is it? Where is it from? What does it do? Who does it affect? How does it affect you, your personal life and those of your loved ones? Right here on this show, Fake News Show. We'll be talking about all that. We'll have lots of juicy information for you. Here on this show, you see the boss news. Though. Any news with fake and I hear with the boss town. I'm Frank Donga. We'll be doing this and a whole lot more. We have a special guest in the studio to join us for Fake News Show today. We're going to be talking about fake news in politics and governance. That's the topic for today. Fake news in politics and governance. Look around you today. There's a whole lot of controversy, argument, or discussion. Or this political party talked this one. Or this politician said he was going to do this for us before we voted him. Now he's not doing it. He turns around and says, I never promised anything. Who do we hold? Nobody. Right here on Fake News Show, we have information for you on what is fake news, how do you prevent it, how do you avoid it. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go anywhere. Dagam, welcome back. It's Fake News Show and I'm Frank Donga, your host on this show. Fake news, fake news, or if you like, call and disinformation. Misinformation, rumor, gist when not pure, anything we call calam. Fake news show. This is where we tell you all about fake news and how it affects us. On this episode, we are talking about fake news, politics, and governance. All right? Okay, more reason I'm now. More reason. Just imagine more reason I'm first. Election period. You know, see campaigns they go left, right, and center. Promises here, promises there. Politicians come out. I will do this for you, I will do that for you. Other times, information about certain candidates come out. This guy is no good. This one is corrupt. This one has money. This one is poor. This one, uh, you go, they honest. That one, they corrupt. Information. After the green election finish, argument starts. Baba, see, you promise or say you go do this. He said, I not promise. So who promise you? Nobody can verify. Nobody can substantiate. So this is are the things we're going to be talking about. How does fake news or rumor or gist, when not correct, how did they take effect our politics and our governors? It's all over in every sphere. But before we do that one now, because we get special guests who will follow us, discuss all this story on this show. Before we go to that direction, people at home, what do they have to say? What do they have to say at home about fake news, politics, and governance? We have to go to the streets. And you know now, you know the way. So our able reporters are on the street now, getting information, reaction from people from home, talking about fake news. So let's go now on the streets and know what people are saying about fake news in politics and governance. I'll be right back after this one. Let's go. Don't spread it. Never ever do. Spreading fake news is a bad something. Don't spread it. Never ever do. Spreading fake news is a bad something. Whether you be worker, whether you be student, farmer or lawyer. Stop carrying the rumor, spreading the gist, confirm if it's true. Whether you be governor, whether you be senator, or minister, or president. Stop turning the figure, hiding the fact, or lying to the citizens too. Don't spread it. Never ever do. Spreading fake news is a bad something. Don't spread it. Never ever do. Spreading fake news is a bad something. If you are in ignorance of a certain uh, message, you you are bound to believe everything in, in, entirely. But if it is something that if you are if you expose or literate or have an experience of the very topic, you will be able to understand. Nigeria, it is uh, our President General Muhammad Buhari. Nigerian president, he blew big life for us, and this thing surprised me. Say so he will bring security, uh, electricity, all these things. I don't see anyone is working. That's a big life for my life. And he's been Our government are even the one telling, I mean, giving us fake news than even the individual. For example, many occasions our government will come up to the air and they say that they have defeated Boko Haram. The next day you will see Boko Haram striking again. And so that is a fake news. That is what I know about fake news. Because what they were telling us is not what we are seeing. That is fake news. That's how we can identify fake news. Now, wow. Now, we will keep pressing for this country. You know, see people, ah, Niger, Ail, not too much. 
We are going to go to an interview segment with our special guest. You know, talk about fake news in politics and governance, how it affects us, you know. Uh, what do we do when there's fake news in the system? Is it just you pick people randomly? How do you stop it? Should we shut down the internet? Should we do laws to make people not talk at all? Or should we regulate? Are there laws that can even help us get information, accurate information from the government? What do we do? Where do we go? Fake news in governance, in politics, what is the way forward? How will fake news affect governance? So we're going to go to our guest right now after this short break, and we'll be discussing with our guests on fake news in politics and governance. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome back, guys. I told you we have a lot of good things planned for you today. It's the fake news show. And I told you we're going to have a special guest in the house. Yes, we get them. Our special guest on day now is no other person but the co-convener of Center for Liberty. He is Mr. Dari Ario. We're going to be discussing fake news and politics or governance. You're welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, fake news here everywhere. <laughs> You're everywhere. Oh. Hey, now, so we see you. Oh. So, Mr. Dari. Interestingly, you are, you are pretty big on politics yourself and governance. You are close to people where they run things for governments. And uh, if I yourself don't do a uh, race before, not the marathon, you once ran for the governorship of, of a, a state, am I right? Yeah, I, I, at least I bid it for it. You bid it for it. Yeah. Okay, so that's not fake news, that's authentic news. <laughs> All from you. Good. Glad to have you here. Thank you very much, bro. What's fake news? Fake news is survives on certain fundamentals. It survives on our sentiment, prejudice, and what you call interest. The interest could be because of clouds. The interest is, can be because now we will be the first place we want to mm. spread this. You want bust the story. The bust the story. I see and see mm. Everybody must see them because I did different groups. So now what about the prejudice? You see, People don't want to go into this real aspect of fake news. For instance, if somebody should send a message to you, a fake news, mm. or an information about your family, about something that affects your community, mm. will you spread it to everybody? As in, you get an information, true or untrue, and it's damaging, you will not spread it. That's why mm. I say it fits on sentiment and prejudice. You are trying to say in layman time for we with the street now be say fake news waiting the power and pass now because I don't like you. So it's easier for me to say absolutely it's the number one, number one factor for factor. It. Because if somebody if you see fake news about your wife for house, you see fake news about your brother for street, you will not spread it. You first protect and say, hey, mm. wait to be this. And check. Then I call and say, oh boy, uh my brother, I be mm. Alpha. <laughs> I see this news about you. Now you talk this thing. I be say no, no, you be talk Do you understand? Fake news is also disinformation. Is malicious spread of, you know, misrepresentation of fact, falsehood, and they do a lot of incalculable damage. Uh, even to our own self, even to the people spreading it and the society. Mm. Because you see, I live by a creed, and that creed is the law of sowing and reaping. Um, I, I, I live by a famous word of uh, late chief of our family, our Lord. So, um, there is no overdraft in the bank of nature that mm. whatever you sow, you shall reap. Mm. So when you sow fake news, you're also going to reap fake news in, in a wild wind form. Mm. And because when you sow a seed, you reap, yeah. you know, uh, probably a big tree with yes. big, plenty of fruits. So that's what people don't understand. So a lot of people today have been a victim of their own, you know, undoing. Because mm. when you send a fake news, it causes a problem and it triggers a crisis. Your wife, your son, your brother becomes a victim. Of that. And fake news is not limited to individuals. Mm. In fact, the most difficult aspect of this fake news now is the ones carefully choreographed mm. by big enterprise or big corporations because of, you know, you, you want to deliberately bring out something um, probably to undermine another person or to undermine another institution. It's, it's not limited to just individuals. The only thing 
between the individuals that those who are hiding under a different identity, covering up their identity using pseudonyms, mm. especially in the social media, because when people talk about fake news, this information they tend to see it from the point of view of people creating fake Twitter accounts, Facebook pages. What about the real people? Real people spreading Spe speaking it to you fake live. News. Mm. And it's G not limited. Gist and rumor. It's not limited to Nigeria. ABC in America, one of the largest TV networks, has been caught doing fake news. Hmm. In yeah. politics and governance generally, let's look at it now. What do you think can be the effect or influence of disinformation, wrong information, or no information? Because I think I want to also believe that they say, you know, silence is a form of communication too. Yeah. What's the effect of fake news or misinformation in politics? I mean, you have played in political fields very well and in governance generally. You see, the fake news is not limited to one political party, it's not limited to one candidate. Most mm. times, these things are carefully scripted, even by a lot of, you know, by many of the candidates, politicians themselves. Really? They are open yes, politicians go at length to damage one another. They go at length even to sponsor you know, um, it, it, it's just because that is not working in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that there are a lot of very, you know, uh, private pictures. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be using some words, stamps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Private pictures of it's individuals, politicians. Yeah. Yes, because of individuals. Private, private pictures of people that are within. But because it has been tested, they realize that the Nigerian society doesn't buy yeah. into that. That even if you release the picture of the president with... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, get, get friends, a compromising right. picture of the president that it will not sell in Nigeria. Yeah. So, because that's the nature of our own society. In yeah. Ghana, it works. In South Africa, it could work. In Africa, it's not just about the Western world. So, that's why we are not seeing that being used to a malign, you know, you know, opponent here. But in terms of real disinformation, in terms of peddling falsehood, it, it's a common practice, a common place in Nigerian politics, and people go at length to even pay for it. And it's even, it's even in some certain instances, they are the most common thing that happen. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to discuss, um, first of all, whose responsibility, responsibility is it? For example, in politics, if fake news comes out, in, is it the political party? Is it the politicians? Is it the, gov the government? And what to do? Don't go anywhere. After this break, we'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next candidate. This next election, I must be the one that we enter. Remember the things we have done for you from yesteryears. We performed fantabulously well. In the next one, we expect you to vote for us. This, our political party, is a political party of the people, uh -huh. by the people, uh -huh. around the people, uh -huh. together with the people, uh -huh. behind the people, uh -huh. on top of the people. Hey. <laughs> In the Northern Colombo local government area, we constructed nothing less than 38,000 kilometers of road. In the Southern Colombo Community Global Government area, we gave them nothing less than 500,000 boreholes. <laughs> In the Eastern Colombo Local Government area, we gave them nothing less than 18 million employment, jobs for their youth. Uh, I know you like it. I know you like it. In the Western Colombo Local Government area, we married for them 18 wives per human being. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any question? Okay. The first person, uh, you. <laughs> My name is Aladinus de Confamento from the People's Original Newspaper. According to information we gathered, only 100 meters of road was done during your tenure, which means what you're just giving us here is a misinformation. Okay, okay. Wait. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Maybe they don't have that uh, amount of road there. In the southern Colombo, only one borehole was done. In the eastern Colombo, only 20 jobs were provided. M m m maybe. In the Western Colombo, <laughs> should I go? You know what? Maybe I will get back to you after I check again. But uh... <laughs> welcome back, guys. It's fake news show. Right now, we're back. We're going to be discussing what to do if there's fake news in politics. Whose responsibility is it to shut it down? First, those who in government, mm -hmm. usually now that it's an atmosphere of uh, this democracy, mm -hmm. so they are product of a political party. A political party that inadvertently, one way or the other, is also a purveyor of fake news or, you know, so we should have a middle cost to it because ordinarily government should have a responsibility, but we, the government of Nigeria is, is also caught in, in partly something you can call a bit of a disinformation. For instance, in response to the fact that the president or the Nigerian government is not doing much over insecurity, suddenly we saw that police came out that they've killed 200 or 250 
bandit, no picture, hmm. no video, no nothing. And now people are saying, look, we can't see this. So it could be, you can't use this information. I'm not saying it's really disinformation, but as long as you can't bring out the fact because a misrepresentation yeah. to, to counter, you know, concerns. Since we are in this dilemma, that is why some organizations, CSOs like CDD, mm -hmm. West Africa, has a role to play here. And I, I appreciate the fact they've been doing a lot on issue of disinformation, yeah. fake news, and the deep fake, which we even didn't talk about. Oh, yeah. Now, CDD should look at some of the things that is happening in the United States of America, like asking the candidates and the political party to always sign off their videos. Mm. Sign off in what do you mean video. for people for that instance, are watching? There are a lot of videos, for instance, about Donald Trump. Yeah. But you will see the ones approved. You say, this is Donald Trump. I mean, this video is approved by Donald Trump. He will say it. This video is approved by Democratic Party. This video is approved by Republican Party. Now, it is not only limited to that. The video will also be used on your social media yeah. platform. So now what these CSOs, NGOs, responding they have going forward in order to help, you know, uh, you know sanitize yeah. this already convoluted space in terms of fake news is for them to guide them on how, you know, to own up to their own video yeah. so that the public is... So if it is not on President Muhammad Buhari's and do, mm -hmm. if it is not on uh, PDP's and do, if it is not on... So don't believe it. Okay. Some issue happened eh, after the last election. Yes. People started holding politicians accountable for what they promised in the election. Absolutely. Eh, Pre-election. Yes. Unfortunately, we did not have a lot of video footages of a candidate, either presidential or governorship, saying, I will give you water by three months in office. I will give you light. We didn't have those things in video formats documented. Even the pieces of paper and information posters that were all over the place. Anybody could have pasted it. And that was the argument. Some parties said, yes, it was fans of the party that went to go and post it and put our logo on it. So it became disinformation. Yeah, all, 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 see, all the candidates in Nigeria, almost all of them are running on disinformation. Ah. Almost all of them. Yes. It's a, so so, so this is, disinformation is, is institutionalized in a political process. Because you know why? when you deliberately because it's a misrepresentation you know that you are contesting and you're supposed to deliver you know certain things for the people but because of you don't want them to hold you mm. do you understand you decide to withhold it from them you lie about mm. it to you because this information is not just even to spread fake news it's also not even Providing provide correct and accurate because you are deceiving the people into voting you. The people need water. Mm. Do you understand? You are telling them, yeah, I'm going to solve your problem. I'm going to solve your problem, but you don't give the specific. It's also, it's, wow. it, 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 it is a, a disinformation wow. without, you know, specific, you know, uh, t t timeline. So, this information is not just because you have given certain, but also willingly deceiving the people, you know, into voting for you when you know you don't even have the capacity you know, to do that. It's, 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 it's falsehood. It is the fault of the, of the press, the media, and the citizens. Information that you're going to take from uh, political aspirants or government agencies or the, your state, official state agency, or any other place that is official. You must make sure it comes from a Twitter handle, or official TV station, and all these official channels. Make sure. If they didn't put it there, call them as a pressman. Hold them accountable. We've learned that from you today. I want to appreciate you on behalf of the entire team you, of Fake News Show. <laughs> now, nah, work you do. I'll say this. Now, nah, man, you be. Fake news for this eh? one. Eh? 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 No, no. Know, they demand fake news for here. Fake waiting. <laughs> Where he we will do boss fake news. We'll go boss more now. After this segment, we have more for you. See the can't face to go one boss. After this break, you not go anywhere else. You see, much people out there in the problem with you now. Any small information that you got. You want to go around and spread it. You didn't even bother to confirm the ferocious land and capacity of that statement. You just believe that, okay, sweet gist. Let me go ahead and spread it. Meanwhile, you are spreading rumor. You are spreading a false information. Oh, and God, you are the problem of everybody in this world. 
and by making sure you yourself you are in a position of high as an high standing. Understand you are a person of high cash in society. You still go ahead and give your citizen misinformation. It's not good. Don't spread the fake news. Stop it. Welcome back, guys. That was an interview with Dari Ario, uh, co convener center for liberty. We're speaking to Dari on the effect of fake news on politics and governance. Now, he has told us some very important things. I don't know whether you catch some points there. I'm going to repeat them for you. The points when we catch, I think they will help you say, if news happen or information day, during election, no, after election, no, you won't hold politicians responsible or government agency. Rumor, they say, and they talk to them, they don't. Civil rights activists and media houses have the responsibility to help us to get them to commit on any information that comes out. If it's not on the official page of a political party of a government agency or a person, it's probably not true. You know, so always confirm things, confirm gist before you carry on. Um. All right, very quickly, we're going to go to the next segment segment called You Don't Cast. We they cast things for here with a bust bubble. There are some news that CDD West Africa have done their research on. They've done their homework and they don't bust the bubble. The news don't cast. We'll come back. My gist you later after this break. My gist you before the break, sir. You don't hear that gist about Amoteku. Yeah, I'm telling you, the same I'm telling you. Another why you say, waiting, waiting. The talk say, if uh, your back people not reverse, I'm telling you, say, we'll go bust down for you. After this break, don't go anywhere. It's fake news show. Stay with us. CDD Fact Check Report. Fake news alert. Did Arawa youth threaten war if your bad don't dissolve Operation Amoteku? CDD is in possession of a video created by Simon Epa and posted on his Facebook. The newly created security outfit operation Amoteku. The Youth Consultative Forum has threatened to begin a war should the Yorubas refuse to dissolve. The news report quoted Yerima Shatima, the leader of Arewa Youth Congress. If after the 20th of this month, January 2020, they don't dissolve that outfit, there will be war in this country. Operation Amotekun is the newly established security outfit launched by the five Southwest governors in Nigeria with the mandate to enhance the safety of the region against kidnapping, banditry, armed robbery and related crimes. Our checks on Simon Ekwa shows that he is a known supporter of the indigenous people of Biafra and has, se and has several videos aimed to misinform and disinform the public. The claim on Yerima Shatima has been seen by over 4,000 users on Facebook. Fact checkers contacted a member of the Arawa Youth Consultative Forum who referred to an interview granted by Yerima Shatima to the news agency of Nigeria and published by The Punch Online on 12th January 2020. In the published report, Mr. Shatima was quoted, Amotekun will promote community policing. The claim that the Arawa Youth Consultative Forum through its leader, Yerima Shatima, threatened war should the Yorubas fail to dissolve Operation Amoteku by January 20th is false and should be disregarded. You are able to, to stop bloggers because bloggers are the most, the, the most people that bring out people. In every rumor, there's an atom of truth there. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us on this episode of Fake News Show. It's been an interesting episode. And don't forget, this show is an initiative of the CDD West Africa, Center for Democracy and Development, West Africa, with special support from USAID and NDI. On the show, we always tell you things about fake news, identifying it, uh, where it's from, what effect it can have, how to avoid it. That's why you always have to take responsibility for yourself. Nobody say every time you see someone, something don't happen, forward it to person. Anything without verifying. They verify news, so they verify news. Fake news and rumor, they sweet until they become your turn. Don't be that guy. Don't be that woman. Don't be that mommy. Don't be that daddy. Don't be that brother or that sister. Stay away from fake news. Don't support it. Help us to stop it. All right? Thank you very much. It's been wonderful having you on this show. Join us next time on this same show, Fake News Show. I'm your host, Frank Donga. Thank you for watching. You can join the conversation by sending us messages, DMs at CDD West Africa on Twitter. You can post your thoughts or your comments on Twitter or any part of social media using the hashtag 
fake news show. Tweet at me, send me a DM if you want, at Frank underscore. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Fake News Show. Initiative of Center for Democracy and Development with support from USAID through the National Democratic Institute.